Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. What do we have, Crystal? Indeed we do, and hope all the mothers out there had a wonderful Mother's Day. By the way, happy Mother's Day, everyone. Um, we've got great friend of the show, Ryan Grimm, on. He's going to talk about some of the challengers to the progressive challengers, so AOC's primary challenge as one example. We've also got Anand Giridadis about his new Vice show, uh, making some interesting news there. But let's start with some bombshell new polling that is exclusive here here to the Hill and Harris Act. Yeah, that's right. So let's begin. So the Hill Harris Act polled voters on whether they've been following the news about sexual harassment allegations against Joe Biden made by Tara Reid. 61% say that they have been closely following it. 39% say they have not. However, it's the numbers of those who have been closely following it that are most noteworthy here. 65% of people who have been following it believe that some sort of accusation of harassment and unwanted touching when Tara Reid worked in Joe Biden's office in the 1990s, 35% they do not believe. And it's the next number as well, which is particularly noteworthy, of that 63% believe the accusation that Joe Biden sexually assaulted Tara Reid in the office, almost exactly mimicking that number previously on harassment, only a 2% defection to 37% who do not believe. So if you look at those numbers, Crystal, you can see that oh, I think two to one issue, yeah. two thirds of people who have been following this closely believe Tara Reid either suffered harassment or some sort of sexual assault allocation. And that, that those are bad numbers for Biden, as we covered before, because it, what was it, 45% of younger voters who have been shown the video um, of the um, denial by Biden on Morning Joe said that they wanted Biden to drop out. And it was a full almost, I think, 20 something percent who said that he should drop out as well of overall Democratic voters. Right, right. And remember, these numbers and those numbers you're referencing are all before Tara gave her full, right. you know, rebuttal to Biden, which happened with Megyn Kelly and dropped on uh, Friday evening. So this is just with seeing Biden out there saying, no, 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 I didn't do it without having even really tuned in. Of course, we had Tara here, but without having really tuned in to Tara, to her side of the story and to her rebuttal then to Biden. So that's significant. I think the other thing that's significant here is the fact that the um, the number of people who believe that he harassed her basically the same as the number of people right. who believe that he assaulted her. Now, why does that matter? Well, one of the positions that it seems like some of the sort of um, Biden supporters have fallen back to is this kind of like, well, she talked about harassment for sure back then, but there's less evidence about the assault. So she came forward with the harassment first. The Larry King live call from her mom doesn't specifically say assault. The documents that came out, the court documents that came out last week doesn't specifically say assault. They say she had a problem. So the position seems to almost be like, well, maybe she was harassed, but we're not really buying this other piece. There's less evidence for that. The American public sees it differently. Those who believe Tara believe Tara, period, end of story. Not pick and choose maybe this part, but not that part. They, two thirds of those who are following this closely say, yeah, we think that this actually happened. And it's not surprising mm -hmm. when you consider how much we've seen Biden in the public eye making women uncomfortable. It's not surprising when you think about the culture as exemplified by the Anita Hill hearings, which of course Biden was also involved in, the culture in this town, especially at this time, I don't think it's that much of a stretch to imagine that this chain of events occurred. The unwanted touching thing, I think pretty much, I mean, look, it's literally on tape. I mean, but what, one interesting thing is, and what I wanna see is, what percent who believe Tara will will vote for Joe Biden? Anyway? Yeah, that's the number that I think I'm most interested in. And I actually think it'll be quite high. I'm I not agree. sure it'll be in the 20. And I, again, I think that's a perfectly reasonable position that people make all the time in terms of zero sum voting. But what's starting to get me are these media personalities who are like, why now? Why are you coming and doing Why are you doing this to us as if Tara is like, is traumatizing them right. having to make the choice. <laughs> Chief among them was Bill Maher, late night host over the weekend. At least he addressed it. We'll get to that later um, in his monologue. Let's take a listen to what he said. Geez, you waited 27 years. It couldn't hold another few months. That's what I would like to ask Ms. Reed. Why now? I'm not saying why not 27 years ago. I understand it can take victims years to come forward. I'm saying why not before Super Tuesday? Why not last fall when we still had a dozen other candidates to choose from? Why wait until Biden is our only hope against Trump and then take him down? 
I have so many thoughts about this, <laughs> which we've been covering from the first of all, why now very specifically is because no one would listen to her. I mean, yeah. she literally went to Time's Up, the organization that is supposed months ago, months right. ago to, that is supposed to help women like her be able to tell their stories. And they said no. Why? Based on Ryan Grimm's reporting, it's because it had to do with Joe Biden and as a political figure. They didn't want to get involved. OK, so that avenue was closed. Tara said she went. She sent letters to Elizabeth Warren, to Kamala Harris, who's her representative in California. N nothing back from them. She got a forum letter back from Warren, didn't hear from Kamala Harris at all. She reached out to multiple news outlets. Nothing. Cricket. So specifically why now and why not before Super Tuesday is not because she wasn't trying to get heard. It's because no one would listen. But the other piece of this with the why now is Tara got asked by Megyn Kelly, which I think is a totally appropriate question, like, is this political? Is this political? And at first she said, no, it's not political. And then she thought for a second and mm. she said, you know what? It is political. Of course it's political. Because what it means is when Joe Biden is, when you're considering Joe Biden for president of the United States, Tara is saying, here's a piece of information you should have. I mean, the man is running for president. Mm. Of course it's political. And of course it makes sense that you would come forward now. Just like Anita Hill came forward when Clarence Thomas was up for a powerful position. Just like Christine Blasey Ford came forward when Brett Kavanaugh was up for a powerful position. Because then is the time when you say, look, if you're considering this man for such a powerful position, here's the thing that I think you should know. So, yeah, that makes all the sense in the world that she would come forward right now. I think I think that's the key part is I appreciated that Tara actually said, I think this is political because yeah. that actually neutralizes all of this. Like, oh, she's just coming forward because of her own. It's like, no, it, you're right. It is an implicitly explicitly political thing. Make of it what you will. And I think that that is treating voters with respect which is the voters are very capable. As we saw, there are a lot of people out there who are like, look, I believe you, Tara, and I'm still going to vote for Joe Biden. And again, I actually think it's a perfectly reasonable position. And it's from that perspective that you have to acknowledge it. And it's people like Bill Maher. I mean, I don't know why Bill Maher can't just be like, yeah, I believe her. And, you know, I'm going to vote for Joe because I believe that what Trump has done to this country, X, Y, and Z. I mean, a lot of people do that on the other side. And it's a very rational calculation if you're talking about the actual things that are matter to you and your politics. And so, Everybody on the Democratic side is trying to shoehorn themselves into this like moralistic position where they can still say the Republicans are the worst and it's not calc not not go back on any of the promises and the things that they made during Justice Brett Kavanaugh right. in 2018. That's right. the truth, is that they don't want to be self-contradictory hypocrites like they were in 2018 that they are now. So they're just trying to worm them way into every way possible in order to not do it. And one of the ways is to just ignore it. And that's what we've seen. You know, this is why I said even credit to Bill for just mentioning it, even addressing it. We have new reporting from the Daily Beast that all four of the late night cable news hosts, Stephen Colbert, Trevor Noah, Seth Meyers, and Jimmy Kimmel, not one of them have addressed the Tara Reid allegations on their air. Remember, millions of people watch these shows every single night. So what have they decided to do? Just not cover it. And the same people covered Access Hollywood relentlessly at the time. I'm not saying that the two stories are the same. One had audio, one was a presidential candidate and all that. But still, I mean, let's check the tape. We can go back and look at the Christine Blasey Ford coverage of all four of these people. And I know exactly what it's going to look like. Probably multiple segments over multiple nights and endless conjecture and all of this Kavanaugh bashing. And now this time comes around, not a single word. Yeah, that's exactly right. And you pointed to earlier one of the things that has driven me crazy from the beginning of this is how many of the stories and how much of the coverage is built around, like, the victimization of yeah. journalists themselves. Like, oh, it's so terrible that we have to deal with these inconvenient allegations. Or, like, the feminists are like, oh, my God, they actually expect us to live up to the principles mm -hmm. that we what set down. Right. Like, what a nightmare that I find myself in this situation. And, like, I get it. It is uncomfortable. But part of why I think this story is so important is because it is so revealing of who actually believes in these principles, who actually stands in the place of, in my view, standing with women, and for whom it was just a political ploy that to be used when it was convenient. And there were there are an awful lot, including basically every Democratic politician, who we see now, it was just about the power. Yeah. It was just when it was convenient that you stand with women. Otherwise, forget about it. And that's why 
To me, the principle is so important because if you actually want to change the culture around women being able to come forward, it can't just be when it feels convenient for you, when it's helpful to your political cause. And that's why these people, by ignoring it, by totally you know, trying to find any excuse they can to smear and dismiss Tara, by holding her and Biden to a completely different standard, they have done so much to undermine that movement. And I think separate and apart from this presidential race, I think that's an incredibly for me, very sad, but very important story that is unfolding before our eyes. Yeah, and I look at it, I mean, obviously opposite. I think there always right. should be high standards. And one of the things is, is that now all of a sudden, Vox and all these other people are like, well, you got to examine these things. And I talked to her and she had inconsistent. And I'm like, yeah, this is fine. I don't have any problem with this. There's just one little problem is that whenever the shoe was on the other foot in terms of the accused, gone, out the window. So the standards overnight change so nakedly in front of your eyes that it becomes so clear what it's all about. They're like, you know, you see people like Matt Iglesias being like, oh, it's very clear what's going on here. He's just calling her a liar. I'm like, fine, say it. Just right. say it. Call her a liar. How do you deal with yeah. though? I mean, I don't I actually would like to hear some of these folks articulate exactly what their position mm. is. Because the approach seems to be just to sort of like try to dismiss each piece of evidence, et cetera, et cetera. But how do you explain that she was saying this back in 1993, according to multiple people, that her mom called in, that the court documents mm -hmm. say it? I mean, is the is the allegation that she's been lying since the 90s? Is that their position? It would lo I would love for them to get press on this. Because guess what? I've never it's heard them explain happen. it. You yeah. know, every Republican that had to go on TV and in public life in 2018 had to answer some version of the question on, do you believe Christine Blasey Ford or not? I mean, have you seen any actual direct questioning of that level? It's just, do you believe Joe Biden? People say yes. It's a cop out. And it's actually a zero sum game because if you believe Joe Biden, then you're you saying don't Tara's believe a liar. Reed. Yeah. Where's the follow up? Where is the follow up from? You said believe women. You said you believe Christine Blasey Ford. Do you believe Tara Reid's allegation? Yes or no? Is she lying to you? Every cable news host in this country asked, or and reporter and activists all over Capitol Hill screamed in these Republican lawmakers' faces. How, where are they? Where are they right now? Where, some, I've been trying to find this lady, the one who screamed at Jeff Flake in an elevator and was elevated as a hero. Let's go ask her if she believes Christy, uh, if she believes Tara Reid. I'd love to hear that answer because I know she's on the on the dole of some very big, big money Democratic organizations. Not a single one of these people. Emily's List, Planned Parenthood, Narrow Approach, all these other pro-choice organizations, pro-women, ACLU, not one word on this. And that tells you everything you need to know. Or to the extent that they've weighed in, they've yeah. said, oh, Joe did a good job responding. The Violence Against Women Act. I didn't know that was an ab, you know, that absolved you of, of any sort sins. of crime that you allegedly have committed over the last year. But there we go. All right. We're going to tell you what's on our radars. That's next.